Hey everyone, it is Monday, June 13th. The time right now is 3.45 p.m. and the temperature is around 22 degrees Celsius. I'm standing here alongside Bloor Street East and there's a look to the west. And just to my right here is the Rosedale Valley. And as you can see, the sidewalk is closed here. As just off in the distance, is the Glen Road Pedestrian Bridge, and that is currently being reconstructed. So it'll be closed for at least the remainder of this year while the city works on that project. And you can kind of see Rosedale Valley Road just off in the distance there. And for this one, at the request of both a channel member and Patreon supporter who goes by the name of Dennis, I'll be going for a ride through the Rosedale neighborhood. And I'll be hopping on the e-scooter there to do it. And I've got this new phone mount, which I won't really be using on this one. But it's certainly an improvement over the old one. That'll come more in handy on the live streams when I have to chat up in front of me. Anyways, time to hop on the scooter here and get going. So I'm just going to turn right here onto Sherburn Street. And I'll start by making my way up to what's pretty much the northeast quadrant of Rosedale. And I've done a number of videos through this neighborhood over the years. But I haven't been up in that area. And I'm just heading over the Rosedale Valley now. You do get a pretty good view of Yorkville off to the west here. So I need to find my way to Glen Road. So let's turn right here. Oh, nope, the street says no exit. But we can check it out anyways. This is Ancroft Place. So I'm already going off script. But as you already might be able to guess, this is a rather affluent neighborhood. It's one of the wealthiest and priciest real estate value-wise in the city. And there's a street Dennis requested I check out that has two homes that are located down in a ravine and apparently they're the only two of that nature in the city. And I was thinking about doing a hidden Toronto video to check them out. But I'm not really sure what to expect, if they're even visible from the street or not. So hopefully we can answer that one on this ride. So I will turn right here on Maple Avenue. It said that there's a lot of old money in Rosedale.
And straight ahead is the Glen Road Pedestrian Bridge, and you can see it's boarded off. And normally that would take you over the valley and then through a tunnel, and it would spit you out right at an entrance to Sherburne Subway Station. Beginning March 7th, the city will remove and reconstruct the Glen Road, Glen Road Pedestrian Bridge. Construction is expected to take two years. Every time I've been on this street, there's always been a lot of construction. There's a really big new development going in on the right here. Here's something you don't see every day. A transport truck <laughs> driving down the sidewalk. I'll make a left at Maple here and then we'll make a right onto Glen Road. Dennis actually suggested two different routes. And one was better suited for walking, the other one for doing on the e-scooter, and I just kind of combined them. Hopefully I can keep my inner speed demon at bay and we'll go slow enough to see some of the properties. Thank you. That was unexpected in this neighborhood. Often it's SUVs rolling through stop signs, not using their turn signals. This is kind of unusual on the left. These homes are all dominated with giant parking lots. You'd expect to see a bit more greenery. And I think that street in question is just up ahead here on the other side of this bridge, which should be taking us over the Yellow Creek. There's a number of different ravines in Rosedale. And soon after this, I'll be making my way up to the old Governor's Bridge, or Governor's Road Bridge. Curious if there's much of a view from here. I don't really want to leave my scooter on the road. This is
pretty big leap to get up here, but there's a look into the ravine. Now to try to reset the angle correctly. I think I got it. Cyclist coming. I'll pop this thing back down onto the street in a second. And here is the hidden street, Omont Road. There's a no exit sign. So apparently there's a couple of properties off to the right that are actually located down in the ravine. Might be better to come here once all the leaves have fallen off. I think this is one of the two properties here on the right. We'll see. What looks to be a swimming pool way down there. And I'm guessing this is private property, so I can't really go in there. There's a home down in there to the right. sure how much of that you can see, but that's certainly quite neat. There's a lot of contractors on the street. Kind of see the green roof on the home. So apparently there's another one. Look at that home on the left, that's gorgeous. I think this is the most easternly one. You can see part of the swimming pool. Can't really get much closer than this. It certainly is private and secluded. I think that's about right. Okay, so now to head up to the Governor's Road Bridge. <laughs> it's fun. 
I never knew this existed. Two homes down in a ravine? That's crazy. I don't think you'll find that anywhere else in the city. A couple of contractors commenting on my scooter. So there's another property just down here that you can't really see, and that one also has a swimming pool. And I guess that would require daily maintenance to keep it clean from all the leaves. Not that affording that would really be much of an issue if you lived here. All right, it's back to Glen Road. And Rosedale is bounded to the south by Bloor Street and to the west by Young Street and to the north by CP Rail Tracks. And to the east by Bayview Avenue. And because of all the ravines and this kind of winding street grid, it's really not a place you would find yourself driving through unless you were going for a driver. You're just gonna drive around and look at a lot of the big properties and rubberneck. And you'll find that's kind of a theme with a lot of the more affluent neighborhoods in Toronto. The bridle path is another one that backs into a ravine. There's a lot of nice properties on the left. And that is Whitney Park. As part of Roxborough Drive. So I'll be turning onto Roxborough on my way back. There's the Rosedale United Church on the right. I think I can go this way actually. I just wanted to get a view of this home. This is definitely one of the more complicated routes that I probably should have written down and taken advantage of this new phone mountain, had it in front of me. So this is Chorley Park. Can I go this way? Let's find out. And this leads down into the ravine here. There's a staircase. Chorley Park on this site 
stood Ontario's fourth and last government house. The official residence of the Lieutenant Governor completed in 1915. Chorley Park was designed by Francis R. Heeks. So there was a big old mansion on this property at some point. And that was torn down. There's people slacklining over there. I'm just going to walk my scooter past these pedestrians. I guess this path will take us down into the ravine. I think that's the evergreen brickworks just off in the distance there. And there's the Don Valley Park Parkway beyond that. All right, let's do some off-roading. This is Astley Avenue. I'm about to head north on. Then I'll make a right and that'll take us over the old Governor's Road Bridge. That used to connect Rosedale to the former borough of East York. I think it was built in 1923. And it was fixed up tremendously in 2000. When you're walking through the trail through the Mud Creek, it looks quite neat. I've recorded that on video before. There we go, 1923 to 2000. So 2000 would have been when it was rebuilt. And I actually think the trail underneath us here it is currently closed off. There's too much of a tree canopy to really see anything below here. Here's a roundabout. Is it really a roundabout if there's stop signs? So let's turn off Governor's Road and go on to Nesbit Drive. This is definitely uncharted territory for me. up here are much smaller in value but I'm sure they're still worth a fortune or smaller in size. Here's a park. And then 
That is Nesbit Park. And I think Bayview Avenue is just off in the distance. Their landscaping bill must cost a fortune. a mix of really old homes and fairly new modern ones and modern ones masquerading as older homes. I think a long, long time ago, Rosedale used to be a private estate. my sense of direction is correct, that roundabout should be coming up. So I'm going to turn left onto that and find my way down to Roxboro. Here it is. So it's back over Mud Creek on Governor's Road. As a bug lands right on my eyeball. The start of these videos, I do an animated map of my route. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this one. Let's go right here and see where this takes us. All right, I think I want to go left here. These are some quaint homes. So I'm going to make my way a bit southwest, I guess. That should be Chorley Park straight ahead. So if I turn right here, I should be able to turn left back onto Glen Road. And then take that to Roxboro. I'll just take that over to Mount Pleasant. Well, this is Douglas Drive. I think I can go left here.
There's the park on the left. I do not see any street signs, but I'm guessing this is Glen. So this is where Roxborough Drive starts, I believe. I should be heading west. And with this camera being chest mounted, I kind of have to just pick a side of the street and angle my body that way. And there certainly are nice homes on this side of the street as well. one of the disadvantages over doing this versus walking. Of course, the big advantage is I can cover a lot more ground. I'll probably come back and do a walking video through Rosedale at some point this summer. And maybe a live stream as well. This roundabout just has yield signs. That's Schofield. Look at this nice car coming. Potential thumbnail shot right there. You're definitely more likely to see landscapers and contractors out than residents coming through here in the daytime. That's quite similar to what you'll find in Forest Hill as well. That's another rather affluent neighborhood. All right, so I'm gonna turn left on Mount Pleasant and then Roxboro resumes just a bit south of here on Mount Pleasant. There's a cycle trail there, but it quickly turns into a dirt path. Another 
if it would help if I press the cross button here. Speed up on my scooter too temporarily, just because there's a bit of a hill to go up. So this is south on Mount Pleasant, although not for long. There's a kind of hidden entrance to Roxborough Street East. And this street here is Chestnut Park. I'm gonna go along. And this street has these really nice old lamp posts on it, kind of reminiscent of Palmerston Avenue. And according to Dennis, the channel member who requested this video, there's a property on the north side of Chestnut Park that used to have a vacant lot beside it, and the lot was sort of set up for big lawn parties. Although I couldn't recall seeing that particular property in the last few times I walked through here. I imagine a vacant lot wouldn't last that long in this neighborhood. I do recall walking through here with the camera before and having a few security cars kind of trail me and seem rather curious as to what I was doing. I think that is Clooney Drive, so I'll be coming back up through here later. I think all the residents need to get together and pick a few days where nobody's going to do any landscaping just so they can sort of enjoy their neighborhood. And this is Roxborough and just south of here is Rosedale Station. And this is Young Street coming up. So I'm not done exploring Rosedale here. commenting on my camera. 
There seems to be a chance to turn left here. So I will take it. So this is Southbound Young Street. And what I'm gonna do is make a left at Almer and that'll turn into Rosedale Valley Road. There's Rosedale subway station just on the left. And Ramson Park on the right. There's quite a backlog to get in that left turn lane. So maybe I'll just do a double cross here. Just to the south of here is downtown. So we're about to head down briefly into the valley. I think I'm going to take Park Road, and that'll take me over to Soap Drive. Just up here, straight ahead, will be the old studio building. And that's where the group of seven once lived and used as a studio space. And I did a hidden Toronto walk video that walked past it. ride by on the subway, it always looks like it's leaning pretty good. Fun fact, back in a prior life, I was a commercial insurance underwriter. And I actually underwrote insuring this particular building. And something kind of stinks down here. And here is Park Road, so I'm going to turn left here. Although it looks like it again will be best to do a double cross. And the street is now Rosedale Valley Road. And it'll take you down into the valley. There's actually a trail you can ride on right here. And it'll terminate at Bayview. I think that's probably where most of these eastbound cars are going. Is this on the right? As part of Branksom Hall. It's like that's a rather prestigious all girls private school. And there is 
the back of the Manulife building. So that's Bloor Street East, just off to the south of here. We've got a bit of a climb here. I'll put the scooter back in a faster mode. That couple up ahead is walking their bikes up it. Can't blame them. It's not an easy climb. Here we go, South Drive. I think I want to go right here. Just taking my scooter back out of speed mode. And we find ourselves at Mount Pleasant. Got a light to cross at. Traffic can move pretty good through here. And every time I think I'm getting a break in traffic, some cars pull through. actually a no straight ahead sign there. So it might be best just to go right here and then go left at these lights. I wanted to just loop around South Drive. So this is Elm Avenue. There's Frankson Paul on the corner. That was one way to cross the street. And there's a crossing just up ahead, so I'll be able to come back over Mount Pleasant. Without having to deal with crossing it. Or at least at surface level. is where Sherburn Street terminates to the north. So I started just south of here at Sherburn and Bloor. And this route's going to loop me around. She was there first. She waved me through, but... Right away is right away. And 
Look at this property on the right. I've covered a fair bit of ground on this ride, but I've barely scratched the surface as to the amount of interesting properties to see in Rosedale. Just to the north of here is Summer Hill, as well as Moore Park. Which are also rather high-end neighborhoods. So we are going over Mount Pleasant now. And this is now Crescent Road. If I were to keep going west, just before I get to Young Street, that's where we will find the subway station. There's a few subway stations that serve Rosedale. Rosedale Station, I guess, on the north end, Summer Hill Station. Those are on line one and on line two. Sherburn Station used to serve it. Well, it still does. You can take Sherburn Street, but it was a lot more convenient when that pedestrian crossing was open at Glen Road. And there's also Castle Frank Station as well, which you can access Rosedale from. So I'm going to make a right at Clooney Drive. And I think I'll try to finish up right by the old North Toronto train station in Summer Hill. Here's Clooney. And this will take us past Chestnut Park in a second. So this is Chestnut Park and Clooney, I think, resumes just on the right here. And this is Rowanwood Avenue. And we're at Thornwood Road.
Look at this monster on the right. That one's for sale. Hi. And it says no exit. I think there's a little park here that'll connect us to the North Toronto train station, which is now the Summerhill LCBO. Here it is. Big playground area. And straight ahead is Young Street. And there's the old Summer Hill train station, which only operated for a total of 16 years, just on the right. That's got this neat fountain in front of it. This turned out to be a fairly long video, longer than I thought it would be. Get the camera mode set there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this one, riding through the Rosedale neighborhood and finishing up here in front of the old North Toronto train station as we anxiously wait for the fountain to tip over. I think it's almost there. But I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. I also have an Instagram account, at Johnny Strides. And there's now a super thanks button appearing below these videos. There we go. We have a train rolling by. Hope you enjoyed this one, and as always, I will catch you on the next one.